G'day, I'm David G, Sheshnag Yoga Center. What on earth is Kundalini? Sheshnag.com. This video is a rare request. I don't get many requests. You can request via YouTube or Facebook, it doesn't matter. The What on Earth is Kundalini group in Facebook, you can join it. And then you can ask to do videos on any subject. I'm open to anyone, but I've only got one suggestion or one request at this point in time from uh, my friend Scoosh, the Scottish madman. Hopefully he reaches the promised land one day. If not, I'll hold his hand until he falls off the cliff. But anyway, this one's for you Scoosh, and this is to do with how do I stop the mind from being distracted during meditation. The way I see it is, you probably can't. What is true meditation? The way I understand true meditation is focusing on one subject at the exclusion of all others. For example, a surfer on a wave. When he catches the wave, why are surfers so relaxed and chilled? Because when he catches the wave or when she catches the wave, she's relying on nature, she's one with nature, she's anticipating the next part of the wave. She's also in the present moment. She's only thinking about being there now. She's in touch with everything there is to try and experience that prolonged present moment. So they're constantly meditating by getting on the wave because it is a form of intense concentration at that point in time. When you're building something out of wood when you're driving some, well, somewhere, maybe, you can drive for so long over an extended period of time without any turns. If you're driving on a long distance drive, then it becomes quite meditative. Time flies. If you want to break it down to the stages of yoga, there's the sixth and seventh stage, dharana and dhyana. And dharana is like the unbroken or the broken line on the highway. Let's say along the road, there's that line that, a little line, a little line, little line, little line, there's a gap in between. That's the first stage of meditation according to the eight stages of Patanjali. So then you concentrate while the line's painted on the road, and then your mind wanders, and then you slowly and gently bring it back without beating yourself up or getting a offended at yourself or for having a war against yourself why when it wanders just bring bring it back gently to whatever you're meditating on could be an image could be a thought could be whatever technique you're choosing doesn't really matter but each time the line breaks your mind naturally wanders then you bring it back the goal of some of these techniques and this is high-end yoga endorsed after nine years in an ashram maybe ten is to be able to extend that line on the road to the unbroken line. And then it goes from the sixth stage of yoga into the seventh called dhyana. So then the unbroken concentration is a form of meditation. The reality is the meditation occurs when you're thinking about one thing at the exclusion of all others. At the end stages of dhyana, you have to remove or replace the image or the form that you've had as a form of divinity. You have to replace it with non-form. How do you concentrate on non-form for an extended period of time over three hours in duration to absorb your whole being into that non-form? That's the highest end. But at the lower end of meditation, Go easy on yourself. Do it for five minutes at the start. Don't aim too high because then you'll get over it. You'll be sick of it. Go for five minutes. Meditation on an object, let's say a car tire, doesn't really matter as long as you can focus on that object for any period of time. And then after a while you'll get so bored with the car tyre that your mind will wander onto maybe the axle or the wheel or the rim or the seat. Doesn't really matter. Gently bring it back to the tyre. See how long you can extend the focus on the tyre. 
then ultimately replace it with something that means something to you, like some form of divinity. If you're religious, you can have an idol of that person at the top of that pyramid of religion. If you're not religious, you can grab something like the symbol that means something to you or something to your grandmother or something to anyone close to you that they've found as an image of some form of divinity. What's divinity? The invisible force, the invisible life force, the higher part of your aspect in the spiritual sense that coordinates all of your experiences before you get there. Or maybe it's the form of intelligence that coordinates or provides a space that allows those experiences to be coordinated. Who knows? Anyway, how do you stop your mind from getting distracted during meditation? You can't. You only have to practice over a period of time to train the mind into a different thought. If you've got a mind that's easily distracted, it'll keep getting distracted. Go easy on yourself. There's different techniques. The goal or the best practices in yoga are to balance the hemispheres of the brain. You can do that a couple of ways. One is called Nadi Shodhana. One is called Hatha Yoga, where you balance the male and female energies, the Ida and Pingala, in your body. Like on the medical symbol. But that's a story for a different day. You balance the hemispheres of your brain so you're in a meditative state. You can either do yoga nidra, will get you there as well. It'll put you into the hypnagogic state. What's the best option for you? There are practices to physiologically prepare yourself for meditation. Most of the time they may, may involve the body, physical postures. It may involve breathing techniques. There's another option, Skoosh, and this is the high-end one. I recommend this one after a few years of yoga and a few years of discipline in the right areas. If you're not disciplined for a year or two doing the easy techniques, you sure as shit don't get on the jet plane, mate. You stay on the bicycle, and you keep doing the bicycle until you can get a certain technique down pat. Then maybe you upgrade your form of transport until your body's prepared to be able to jump into a jet plane and take the express route there. But the express route for meditation, which is a good one, and you probably can do it. I'm not saying don't do it. I'm saying traditionally might not be the best and chosen method. The reality is there's Kriya Yoga out there, which does provide the opportunity to do an overload on the brain, which includes a physical posture, a breathing technique, a, some sort of focus internally on your energetic subtle system. There's also a mudra involved. So Kriya Yoga is high end, but it overloads the mind so the mind has a focus or many focuses, which minimizes the chance of the mind actually being able to wander. Hopefully some of that made sense, brother. If not, feedback, positive or constructive, <laughs> get onto it. Best form of meditation, how to minimize the distractions in the mind. I don't think it's possible. You gotta retrain the mind. Om Namah Shivaya. What on earth is Kundalini? Sheshnag.com. Peace.